Hi, I'm Gary, man. Oh, hi. Good afternoon, man. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it going? I'm doing well. Um, pretty stoked, a little bit nervous <laughs> to be in the show. <laughs> um, no, no, I'm a big, jumping on. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the podcast, man. And in return, I'm a big fan of you as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers, mate. I've like uh I've noticed your support from early on, yeah, on Instagram and stuff. So I appreciate that. Yeah, it was uh, I'm I've been really into a lot of the interviews. Like through your podcast, I've discovered a lot of the a lot of more of the bands of the um, mid 2000s, the Norris, um, UK scene, and like I just feels like I just hit a gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, that's a, that's a great microphone you got there. Oh, thank you. It's um, pretty old, kind of rubbish at this point, but um, it well, cool. gets the job done. <laughs> My summit. So you're in the Philippines right now, is that right? Yes, all the way from uh, southern Luzon, Binyan, Laguna, just outside of Manila. Okay, cool. Um, and you've been there all your life. Like, what's what's going on? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've I grew up in Manila. Uh, I've moved here to Laguna um, ever since I uh, started a job. Um, but yeah, pretty much been here all my life. Okay, cool. Yes, uh, so, well, uh, yeah, just jumping on. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit later, thank though, you right? so much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, and I'm right in thinking, are you like in a band with Jeff Catania, who we had on as a guest? Is that right? Yes, I am in a, currently in a band with Jeff of Catania, legendary roadie of Paddington's and others fame, currently with Madness. Um, yeah, Jeff is just has been one of my greatest loves in my so called music career. He's been nothing but good to me. He's taught me a lot. And uh, yeah, Lakita. Yeah, cool, yeah. We'll, we'll get onto that anyway. Um, but let's take it back, say, 20 years ago. What were you up to at that point? 20 years ago? I was five years old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I know this brings up, uh, this kind of makes me look a little, you know, what is this kid from Manila? Know, and what does this kid from the Philippines know about, you know, the mid 2000s? music scene and it's kind of a bit standoffish you know <laughs> people might be thinking it, it, it's a little weird but yeah five years years ago i was you know, just I, I to be honest growing up um my mom and dad were big music fans and my dad was into a lot of um grunge and heavy metal and on the other hand my mom was into the beatles and that's pretty much what kind of kicked up. But, but I, I did, I, I'd say I didn't take music very seriously until I was about 13 or 12. But yeah, that's pretty much 20 years ago. Cool, cool. Um, so let's get into your choices then. So starting with The Cribs, I'm All Right Me. Why this particular song? I chose The Cribs because as far back as I can remember, at least um, focusing on the current um, category that we have in indie music, I think the Cribs were the first band of that whole thing that I remember running into. Yeah, yeah. As for why I picked I'm All Right Me, uh, it's just woo! <laughs> my personal favorite of mine, man. It offers a bit of more contrast compared to um, uh, mirror kissers and hey scenesters because it kind of puts you in the shoes of those people that they're kind of going on about and that outro um take drugs don't sleep have contempt for those you meet mm. <laughs> love it excellent well here it is and here's the cribs with i'm all right me uh, so what's like the music scene like in the philippines then music scene well it's the guitar music scene in the philippines has always been pretty active you know rain dating back to the 70s 80s and 90s i think philippine guitar music has been at its was it was at its peak particularly during the mid 90s you know after the onset of grunge bands we, we had bands like the youth which my father is actually a part-time member of uh, oh, the right. youth uh, teeth, Razorback, and of course, bands like Eraserheads and River Maya. Yeah, guitar music has always been uh, relevant here in the Philippines. As of recently, though, there has been a, a huge resurgence in guitar music here. Um, I would say I noticed a huge spike and post-pandemic. 
I'd say 2021 going onwards, a lot of these um, uh, kids, I call them kids because they're actually, you know, they just, just out of high school. They t- just t- take my breath away. And uh, yeah, I'm currently part of a music collective called um, Wolves Collective, also the Bombshell Collective. And yeah, we've just been thriving here in the Laguna music scene. Yes, because yeah, I noticed some clips online recently of um, somewhere in Asia, people going absolutely wild for the Stone Roses. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not I, 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 To be honest with you, if I could be very, very honest, <laughs> it's the Stone Roses, you know, here in the Philippines, there isn't, there aren't many people I know of who are into the Stone Roses. However, my own circle of friends, like I'd say, four or five of us, you know, they've been getting into a lot of the shoe gay stuff. Yeah, the Smiths is a big one as well, yeah. The Smiths, absolutely. And um, I told them to listen to the Stone's debut album and they just went out absolutely bonkers. You know, John Squire <laughs> as a guitar playing, ooh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they- yes. Go on, what are you saying? Oh, not nothing. I was just saying, yeah, there's definitely been a particular huge resurgence in guitar music, especially among young people in Asia. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, so then moving to your second choice, I have heard of this band, but I've never really got into them, but I was really enjoying this song. Um, yeah, why this band? All right, stepping back to song number 10, um, The Cribs by The Cribs. I discovered The Cribs through The Exploding Hearts because both of those bands hold quite um, a big influence on the... Power pop, power pop community in general. Like, there are lo- loads of forums around Facebook, Instagram. Um, yeah, power pop, and more particularly the seventies punk influenced type of power pop. And I, I remember wanting to hear more albums like the Exploding Hearts, Guitar Romantic, and I think uh, another person told me to listen to the Cribs, and that's how I discovered the Cribs. But yeah, another thing is I saw a picture somewhere on the inter- just somewhere of one of the German brothers wearing um, the T-shirt of the Exploding Hearts. So I was like, "That's just fucking freaking cool." I, am I allowed to cuss? I'm, I'm really <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but yeah, the Exploding Hearts uh, just absolutely love it. Okay, great. Well, here they are. Here's the Exploding Hearts with Modern Kicks. So back to this band then. How how does it work and what instruments do you play in the band with Jeff? Well, I sing lead vocals. I try to contribute in a bit of songwriting here and there. I play the, I play the guitar. Um, diving into the, the, the recording process, it is a bit difficult, but this is where I feel like the internet is just a, a real blessing. Uh, we've been emailing back and forth our own tracks, you know, what kind of works, what doesn't, and... Jeff's been really patient with me. Uh, I I've been I, I I could slack. I've been slacking off here and there, but <laughs> Jeff has just been really good to me. And yeah, yeah, cool. And so, what are you like a singer songwriter? Would you say? Or how does it work? Sing. Yeah, I have my own band uh, called Citizen K. We are currently playing gig, and uh, I think. In a month or so, we've been together for about two years, and I write all I write and sing all the material with my buddies, um, Vien, Linwell, and Lloyd, and my friends Ian and Edrich has just joined the band. But yeah, um, Citizen K has been uh, very much influenced by British guitar music, um, a lot of uh, Oasis stuff, Britpop uh, stuff to to the Libertines. We'll get on that later. But, uh, yeah, but mainly British guitar music, man. Yeah, Citizen K off to a search. Like, is it on Spotify and stuff? As of this moment, no. Uh, okay. I'm still trying to, we're still trying to hone our craft, but uh, our demos are on SoundCloud, and that's pretty much where it goes for now. Yeah, yeah, but your stuff with Jeff is on Spotify, isn't it? Yes, the stuff with Jeff is on Spotify. <laughs> it is on Bandcamp. Uh, you can check him, check, check out all the links in his um, other account on Instagram called Accumulate... Uh, accumulator guitars at accumulator guitars and all the links will be there we just came out with our latest single called walking which i'm very um proud of you know we did our thing there yeah well we can play that now if you want so 
What's in how do you pronounce the band there? Uh Lakita. Lakita. So this is Lakita with Walking. Cool. Um Yeah, then the next band obviously links with Jeff. He used to work with them, the others. Um yeah, what does this band kind of mean for you or what do they do for you? I just got goosebumps just as we entered this third song, man. Uh, <laughs> now, this is going to be a, a bit of a long one, but the others, Dominic Masters, boy. Um, looking him up, that is how I discovered this podcast. His, okay. his interview with you. That was the first interview I ever saw of him. I have had the honor of connecting with a guy on Facebook. You know, I didn't think he was going to reply, but about a month, month or two later, he just he got back to me and I was just doing backflips. And yeah, we chatted for a bit. He heard a few of my demos and he anointed me as the 853 Kamikaze uh, Division Chief of the Philippine Chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So when was this? Like, just I suppose that would be early. 2020 then or in around that I, time it, it, it was just as the the interview came out i think i remember thinking oh, oh, this interview just came out like i mean I, I had i had been listening to the others for a while since then but during that time i was really going deep into the others lore and all and that whole albion thing and looking his name up i found the interview and it was and at that time it was like uploaded a week prior it kind, of, it kind of blew me away. I was like, I gotta check this out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. And then I think this song might be. I remember Tom Atkin from Paddington saying he reckons his song's about Pete Doherty, which kind of makes sense on the lyrics. So it makes yep. it in an interesting listen. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here it is. Here's the others with Stan Balls. And then the next band, Rooney. I recognize the name because I swear they played on. The OC, I think, television program. <laughs> but apart from that, to admit, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> apart from that, my knowledge, knowledge is lacking a little bit. Uh, what can you tell us about about Rooney? Uh, the Rooney, they're uh, fronted by uh, one of my greatest idols, uh, Robert Schwartzman. Of uh, a lot of people might know him as an actor. He 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 was starring in he starred in The Princess Diaries, I believe. Um, I never watched it, <laughs> so I, I, I couldn't really get into detail about that. But Robert Schwartzman just carries a really great burning torch for 60s and 70s um, pop music. The Beatles, the Beach Boys, all that stuff. And I feel, because um, their debut, Rooney's debut album came out around 2002, I believe. It was just after um, The Strokes um, came out. And to be honest... I feel like in regards to that whole garage rock revival, post-punk revival and naughty scene in the mid early 2000s, California is kind of like a little bit overlooked due to their um, uh, reputation for, you know, Hollywood and all that. And all, a lot of the spotlight came to um, or was focused on New York you know, bands like the strokes, Interpol, the AAS, but I feel like Rooney at that time were the best that California had to offer. And I, I really love them. Also happens to be um, a band under the Geffen label. So. Okay. What's the uh, relevance there? I, took, I just found out, about, I found out about that recently. It just kind of blows me away. Geffen. <laughs> All right. Fair play. Um, okay. Well, let's hear them then. Here's Rooney with Blue Side. And then, I mean, so, so you're 25 then? Yep, born in <laughs> 1999. Good maths from me, yeah. Um, so how, in terms of, like, new music then, like, how, what's your way of finding new music? Is there, like, prominent radio stations in the Philippines or is it more Spotify kind of thing? Uh, I, I don't really have much access to radio here in the Philippines, but, uh, yeah, mostly online activity, man. Um, Spotify, uh, rate your music, uh, rate your music .com is a really big source for more uh, stuff. And oh, okay, social media in general, I'd say, really brings out a lot. Cause um, the, I'd say the most recent band I have loved deeply uh, were um, a band called Fever from Hull. 
From Hull, that's where I'm from. Yeah. Oh. All right, okay. I would just love to visit someday. Paddington <laughs> Place, uh, House Martins. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Beaver, I don't think I've heard of them. That's interesting. I'll have to listen. Cool, and that was what? Beaver, that was yeah. through what, that social was media? That was through, um, yeah, I think I found them on Instagram. Uh, but besides Fever, I love uh, uh, an American band called The Lemon Twigs. Oh, uh, yeah. Very 70s, 60s influenced band led by two brothers, I believe. Yeah, I think they I think they supported Arctic Monkeys at some point. Oh, uh, I never knew that. Yeah, I quite like them as well. Nice one. Cool. Um, and then in terms of like going to gigs, like how does that work? Do you get many bands that come over there? Uh, foreign bands? Yeah. The, the Most of the foreign artists that come to the Philippines are of the K-pop category, oh, which right. uh, nothing against that type of music, but uh, <laughs> it has been suppressing a lot of um, I mean, it has been, you know, getting in the way of kids picking up their guitars and just, you know, rocking out and I don't know. But yeah, as of recently, um, a few guitar bands have uh, foreign guitar bands have been coming to the Philippines. Um, I saw the Arctic Monkeys last year uh, yes. in Wonderland Festival, and just I think I must have spent half my uh, Christmas money, my my Christmas salary, just getting that ticket. <laughs> and it was it was worth it. But uh, <laughs> Christmas dinner had to be cut a bit short for that one. <laughs> That's it. So that was that was that their own show? Was it a festival type thing? They, I, I it wasn't part of the pe- part of the festival per se, but it was part of the event. Um, they were day three, I believe. Day three was dedicated to just the Arctic Monkeys. All right, okay, that's it. I bet it's a cool place to play for bands as well. It's like, I imagine it's yeah, a bit different. Not many bands come down here. Mostly, most of the guitar bands that come here, are rock bands, are um, of the emo, are emo bands. All uh, right. Uh, post-hardcore bands, uh, a, a few metal bands here and there. Not many British bands. I remember, I would, I think it was back in 2015, 20... No, no, no. It was 2019, 2018. The Cooks came. I had <laughs> no idea they came. Boy, was I pissed. <laughs> I... <laughs> and boy, it just... And I, I seeing all those people, you know, getting to see the cooks and those um, recap footages, I was like, you bastards. <laughs> and um, did the Strokes play recently? No? I don't believe they've ever came came here. Okay, the I might just have be... never come to the Philippines. Yeah, I don't think they have. Right, okay. Might just be Liam, in Asia then. Liam came 2016. That was my first concert. Liam Gallagher, 2016. Right. Uh, yeah, my grandmother took me because I was too stupid to take the bus alone, but <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it. Yeah, did she enjoy it? Oh, she had to wait outside. Oh, it was a pain. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I gave her um, some cash, like, um, roam around, maybe grab a coffee or two, but yeah, it was, it was a bit embarrassing, but yeah. No, well played, man. Um, what type of venue is it? Is it like an outdoor thing or? It was um, Moa Arena, Mall of Asia Arena. Um, held by one of our biggest small chains called SM. Okay. Uh, a lot of artists have played there, uh, Moa Arena. What is that? The same for Arctic Monkeys are? Is that outside? No, it was, it's indoors. It's a stadium, indoor stadium. Is that where Monkeys played as well, though, yeah? Uh, the Arctic Monkeys played outdoor, at an outdoor festival in um, Alabang. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, that's the next song then. Um, this is where like the French influence comes in. He sent me a couple of French videos. Yep. This band called Nast, I think. Nast. Like, yeah. How um yeah, how did he get into like the French indie indie scene? I think as uh, the best I could remember it was looking through Baby Shambles footage and it just appeared on the side. Like I noticed a, a lot of these French songs and bands kept popping up. Bands like the BB Bruins. Uh, Nast, um, uh, the Plasticines, who are an all-girl group, which are probably my favorite girl, my, my number one. They're probably my number one favorite girl group of all time. Um, 
these bands were just far very different from the bands that we have here in the Philippines. They were more, very much more akin to like, yeah, the New York stuff, um, stuff from the UK, very mod punk. There was there was a bit of Britpop in there. There was a bit of that Arctic Monkeys and Libertines influence. But most of all, I could really sense that 1977 Johnny Thunders Ramones, the Clash type spirit, and it just blew me away. And um, the, the band, the band that I chose, uh, Nast or Lenast, um, very short, quite a short-lived band, I, I believe. They only released one album. Uh, broke up a couple of years later after the album came out. And uh, why I picked the song, I can't even read that. Uh, Color the glass. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just love it. I really like it. Cool. Well, here it is on his mask with Coeur de Glass. And then the next band, I'm pretty sure I've heard of Hogboy. Were they a yes. British band, yeah? I, I believe I requested having them on the podcast uh, <laughs> right, a couple right, of years okay. back. Uh, Makes sense. Hogboy. Uh, Jeff is also a big fan of Hogboy. Best unknown band from the 2000s, he says. And I'm in inclined to jump and believe in that statement um hug boy um album was released 2002 called or eight and uh i discovered them through a simple um, genre tag on rateyourmusic.com you know the simple garage rock revival tag and the album came out i was like hmm where were these guys i i looked in their profile they're from sheffield 2002 Sheffield and it just so happens that their album came out a few months before the Libertines up the bracket came out so I was like hmm took a listen saw a few live footage and as per usual like the other bands blew, blew me away it's, the songs <laughs> were just it, it was a sweaty brand of punk rock and roll 70s stuff uh, sounded like a broken record here, but yeah, that se late seventies Johnny Thunders, New York Dolls, Ramon Spirit was all there, and uh, just very dirty, very gritty stuff. And um, had the chance of speaking to the guys through social media, and they're just lovely. Okay, yeah, see, I'm have to look into getting them on then. Yeah, so, and yeah. Uh, I forgot, oh. to, I got, forgot to mention. I think. Uh, they just got back together under a different name. Uh, oh, okay. They have a new musical project called T for Thomas, I believe. Yeah, right, which is right. pretty cool. Cool. You'll have to send me the uh, the links on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah here, here they are. Anyway, here's Hogboy with So Young. And then we've referenced them before, but Arctic Monkeys with one of the yep. uh, early songs. Like, uh, yeah, how... How into the Arctic Monkeys I am then? <laughs> how uh, how I got into the Arctic Monkeys? Yeah, like how yeah, basically yeah. Uh, well, stemming back to what I originally listened to, I was into like the Beatles. You know, I I started I um, followed the British musical canon. I was into the Beatles. I was into the Rolling Stones, the Who. I eventually came into. The Sex Pistols, The Smiths, The Cure, The Stone Roses, and of course, Oasis and Britpop. I just kept wondering, what was the next step? Well, I wonder what we had for the 2000s. And of course, the Arctic Monkeys came up. And I have to admit, initially, I wasn't, uh, I was a bit skeptic because they were, they were very, the Arctic Monkeys are just well known worldwide. You know, this is, they're just, just this worldwide band. And I had my doubts at first because, you know, a lot of my uh, so-called buddies kept bringing them up. N not musical buddies, by the way, just online friends that I had, you know, Arctic Monkeys, Arctic Monkeys, all right, you know what? First album, boop, anticipation was a habit to set. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. And uh, also, at, at the same time, I, was just, I also got into The Last Shadow Puppets with Miles Kane, and I'm just a huge Miles Kane fan. And... Yeah, back to the Arctic Monkeys, that first album, whatever you say I am. 
it just made me realize how much of a genius this guy was, Alex Turner. Sheesh. <laughs> and that that was my very first exposure to um like that post punk revival like stop and go very angular guitar riffage and that unusual time beats mm. just loved every bit of it and the first yeah the first two albums were just my absolute favorite but uh as of this very moment my I would say my favorite Arctic Monkeys album is Suck It and See of 2011. Very laid back, just a lot of great guitar work, very summery, vibey, feely, very just, I would say it was the closest they ever got to sounding like the Stone Roses or a bit of a, bit of a far-fetched comparison, but the closest, it's the closest they ever got to sounding to that, you know, jangly, smitsy feel. And of course, you know, each album they came out, you know, they're just always changing their sound. They're growing throughout every album. So, you know, they have that. Some people might not like it, but it just shows how much they are growing and still growing to this day. No, I agree, definitely. Yeah. Well, here it is his uh, Arctic Monkeys with Fake Tales of San Francisco. Cool. Yeah, no, it's interesting you say that about the newest stuff. You, uh, you're a fan of the recent albums because obviously they're quite divisive, it seems. Yep. Um, not many people are too keen on it, but you know, what can you do? It's a matter of preference, but one thing's for sure, they're growing and I can't wait to see what happens next. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of rumors about them calling it a day after the last talk. So the last yeah. talk was massive, I think. Yes, I, don't know if there's I, any truth I actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually fell for that Twitter post. There was this infamous Twitter post that was being shared all over the place. And I was like, no way, this cannot happen. And <laughs> uh, it was and going through the comments and it was quick to debunk. But I really hope, you know, Alex keeps, you know, doing his thing. Keep at it, Alex. Love you. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see him, see him do something solo. See, like how yeah. experimentally could go. Might be yep, his his own solo EP, uh, submarine. No, oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. And moving on, then the next band from Sweden, Mando Diao. I've never heard of them, but what can you tell us about that? Mando Diao, Sweden. Um, I love the hives. I really love the hives. You know, Sweden. God, they have a lot to offer when it comes to music. You know, ABBA was already the, and, it's, and people might not agree with me, but ABBA is just the first sign of things to come. Maybe, maybe a little bit before that, maybe there's stuff that I just didn't know, but Sweden, good God, the, the, the way those guys go about their songwriting and English, English songs, English lyrics, and English is not even their first language. It just really, it, I'm just in awe. And uh, going back to Mando Diao, uh, I really do think they were the equivalent to, um, they, they were Sweden's own Pete and Carl. They were Sweden's own Liam and Noel. Uh, the, the two front men they have, um, Gustav and Bjorn, songwriting partnership like I've never, like, it, it, just, it just, it is it is what it is. It is, it's just, just perfect. Um their discography, the band's full discography, um, is very, very long lasting. They have dwelled on the bluesy rock and roll sound for a few albums, but they did grow. They dabbled on a bit of that synth pop for Elita, I believe. Elita and released sometime between the two, two late, maybe early 2010s. Um, the band is still active to this day, except I uh, Gustav has left. And I can only wish Bjorn, if you're watching, Gustav, if you're watching, please, please, if you could just reconnect somehow, I would just love to see that. <laughs> okay, great. Well, here they are. Here's Manda Giao with the band. Then yeah, coming into home music again, the Paddingtons. I suppose in a similar scene with the the others and the Cribs. Um, yeah, why why this song though? Bit of an interesting choice. The Paddingtons are my, I would say they're my soul punk band. I just love these guys. Um, first comes first. 2005. Uh, I was just in, 
in awe. They were kind of like the encompassment of everything I loved about punk rock, about Britain, about uh, a lot of the yeah late late seventies late seventies punk stuff. And just like the Libertines, just come to some capacity. They were just a band for me, you know. When it came to like those that early two that the mid two thousands punk, punk rock, um, I wasn't emo. I certainly wasn't a skater. I loved my parents, and I had no desire to come out of my uh, my hometown. And I just love it. Uh, they 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 are the band for me. Um, all right in the morning. I feel like that was a song that could have been pushed more. I believe um, Kyle of The View, uh, it's his own personal song too. I think that's what I remember Marv was saying. And Marv, Marv is just a beautiful soul. The guy, the, I just love the guy. I, I spoke, <laughs> I speak for them a few times. And uh, Marv, if you're watching, I love you, man. Uh. <laughs> yeah, they got Marv. Nathan, I remember The View saying this was their favorite Paddington song, I think. Yep. I think they covered and- it maybe. As I, I discover how I discovered the Paddingtons, yeah, I discovered it through The View. I was a big fan of The View. I was a big fan of Hats Off to the Buskers, Skag Trendy, Superstar Tradesman. And yeah, I think their out first comes first came up after that. And that is how we discovered the Paddingtons. Cool. Well, here they are. Here's the Paddingtons with All Right in the Morning. And yeah, we've mentioned the Libertines a few times then. Um, and you picked music when the lights go out. Is this one you can? <laughs> I mean, I play guitar fairly badly, but this is one I can play on acoustic. It's quite a nice one to play. Um, yep. But yeah, why this song? Uh, I just feels like I. I wanted to end things on a libertine song. I didn't know which, and um, I just feel like this is when. I knew my first listen to music when the lights go out was like, yep, this was it. <laughs> the band for me, I, 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 said, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what, I, I don't have much many things to say. I just let the music do the talking, but uh, yeah, I, I was a big fan of the Libertines. I still am huge fan. And uh, this was in uh, the, my, the Facebook marketplace here in the Philippines. It just blows me away. Uh, uh, yeah, I've it, read that book. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it just this is fate. I'm not. I prefer up the bracket more than the second album, but I chose music when the lights go out because I feel like this is. It was when all the things came together. You know, it just encompasses everything the Libertines were about, uh, including everything from the baby shambles to the dirty pretty things. You know, everything about Carl and Pete, the the, the English romanticism, full package, man, and. Yeah, cool. What do you make of like the the new album and stuff? I have not heard the full album fully. Shame on me, man. Nah, Shame I'm on the me. Same, to be fair. <laughs> I, I I've heard the singles, but I haven't heard the full record. But I'm sure it's good, and uh, I'll listen to it tonight. Shame on me for not <laughs> getting on it. I, I've been very busy lately, but yeah. No, nah, yeah. Super stoked when I heard the though. news. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this room is about Baby Sean was getting back together as well, which is. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, here's here's your choice. Here's the Libertines with music when the lights go out. Well, cheers, mate. Cheers, Miguel. Um this yeah. has been cool. Uh is there anything you want to plug? I mean, we've mentioned some of your bands, but is there any places people can go to check out your stuff? Yeah, um, come check out uh Lakita, me and Jeff's work. Um We've we have a, an EP out called Leela. Uh, we have a few singles out on Spotify and Bandcamp. You you can go on at accumulators underscore guitars on Instagram. All the links will be there. Um, we did our EP with our friend Tom. Shoutouts to him. Um, we have Jim Sharrick of the Lightning Seeds, a nephew of Chris Sharrick. Um, he and Jeff are currently working on a new tune. Oh, uh, I believe, yeah, Jeff is just finding the right guitar tones for all that. Uh, for Citizen K and Wolves Collective, Bombshell Collective, shout outs to my band, shout outs to Vien, Vien, I love you, man, Linwell, Ian, Lloyd, Adrich, um, 
Bombshell Collective, Ordinary Summer, Decent, Iron Be Ordinary. Love you lots. <laughs> cool. Thank if you, you send me so the... much for having me on the show, man. I I was doing backflips when I received your message. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know if I could do it or not, but here I am. I tried my best. Uh, yeah. Mate, it's been great, mate. It's been good. If you say if you send me all the links to the bands, I'll put them in Absolutely. the description to uh put them in, in the description on the YouTube video. But yeah. But nice one, mate. I'll uh, I'll let you go, but yeah, I'll let you know what's going on with it. It'll be on Patreon first and it'll be out as a radio show in a couple of weeks. Um Thanks. Thank you so much, man. But you have to get you back on at some point. You can do with the young energy on here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks so much for having me, man. It's just I, I'm, I'm speechless. Honestly, I, I've been speechless throughout this whole thing. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> I just had to go through. I just had to go with the wind. Run with the wind. Uh, thanks, Harry. I, I'm I really, really from the bottom of my heart. I greatly appreciate it. No, it's all good, mate. Yeah. Um, I'll keep an eye and, on what you're doing. Uh, thanks, thanks to Jeff for having uh, you know putting my name out there and his stuff, man. Thanks, Jeff. Love you, man. <laughs> so, if you. So we didn't really cover like how he got in touch with Jeff. Was that through? Yes. Um, I followed him on Instagram after his interview came out. Um, Jeff, uh, we chatted back and forth and he saw uh, a few of my uh, small clips, Instagram reels of me singing, doing a bit of Arctic Monkey stuff, seeing a few of my own stuff. And he invited me to uh, sing his own uh, material. Uh, he sent me the backing track and lyrics to Leela and Ran With The Wind. I just sung over it. I didn't think anything was going to com come of it because I was, I, I was very limited with my resources. I know I actually didn't even have a, access to a computer when I did that song. So, but yeah, me and Jeff have been tight ever since. That's cool. Yeah. So have you, do you plan to go over to Barcelona or anything at some point? Uh, Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I do plan on coming over to you know having a, a bit of a, a pilgrimage of the UK, hopefully sometime soon. Yeah, have you managed to get to Europe at all and yet? No. No, I've never stepped out of the Philippines. Oh wow. Okay. I hope to. Yes, mate. Well, I'll keep a keen eye on your Instagram. See what you get up to. Thank you so much, man. I love you. <laughs> Big fan. All right, cheers, Miguel. Cheers. Take care. I'll be in touch. Take care. See you later.